really got me interested, Dr. Robert Rowan, who's a good friend of mine. I treated his father about six years ago, and he did very well with microcurrent. But fortunately, since that time, he's had a stroke and a heart attack, and his vision has declined. He recently had stem cell therapy, and he had an improvement of his vision, and I was excited. Uh, he had it done here in the United States, stem cell therapy, and it helped him. And at the same time, I talked with Dr. David uh, Steinblock, who wrote the book called Stem Cell Therapy. And uh, I asked him about his experience with macular degeneration. And he said that he's treated about 30 or 40 people, and that most of the people have gotten a good result. Dr. Steinblock and I are going to be collaborating on a stem cell project in which we're going to be doing uh, patients with macular de degeneration in our Phoenix office. I really feel that stem cell therapy and microcurrent go hand in hand. Because all the things that he has experienced with stem cell, I've experienced with microcurrent. You know, why do some people do well with stem cells? Others don't. Likewise with me. Why do some people do well with microcurrent? Why don't others do well? So what is a stem cell? A stem cell is an undifferentiated cell in the body, which has the ability to transform itself into any other part of the body. It's truly magical. Stem cells are active in all of us. Whenever we have a severe injury, stem cells go to the call, call to action stem cells, to repair a cut, a badly damaged tissue. So our stem cells are still active. Unfortunately, as we get older, toxic problems, poor diet, poor hydration, imbalance of the autonomic nervous system, stem cells don't work that way. So when you take this stem cell, it has the ability to help out in the body. It's interesting because the stem cells kind of go where, to where they're needed. If a macular degeneration patient is treated and they have another problem, the stem cells may help that other problem and not the eye. He had a case of a guy with pneumonia who came in, walking pneumonia, had stem cell therapy, it helped the pneumonia but not the eye. People who don't respond to stem cell therapies have a chronic infection, in particular a sinus infection. The second area is decreased oxygen saturation. If you have chronic lung disease or sleep apnea, and you have low oxygen at night, stem cell therapy is not going to work. And I think the same thing with microcurrent therapy, if you have poor oxygenation. Also, heavy metal poisoning. We always look at heavy metal poisoning because that can interfere with the body healing. And Dr. Steenblock feels strongly if someone is, has toxic metals, take care of that before you get the stem cell. There are four different types of stem cell therapy. One is called uh, allogenic. Allogenic means the other. Stem cells are taken from one person to the other. So let's say you have leukemia and your bone marrow is shot, you have radiation, you have a donor. He gives you stem cells, they're injected into your The second type of stem cell, which I'm interested in, is called autogenic of the self. So we take stem cells from your body, put them into circulation. There's two other types, the embryonic stem cell, which has a lot, a lot of controversy. This is where you take uh, aborted fetuses and you use them ste those stem cells. And the other popular method, which is doctors are looking at in the United States, is, is cord cell, human cord cell. After the baby's born, the umbilical cord is cut. There are stem cells in the umbilical cord. Those stem cells are very viable and very effective. Right now in the United States, those stem cells are only permitted to be used for leukemia and different uh, anemic uh, conditions. They can't be used for macular degeneration. Although Dr. Steenblock feels that cases that don't respond, if you're sick, have a lot of other medical problems and poor health, then the cord stem cells may be more viable for you. And he does have an association with a clinic in Mexico that's using the cord stem cells. So what Dr. Steenblock and I are interested in doing 
is looking at macular degeneration patients using autogenic stem cells, taking your own body stem cells, purifying it, injecting it back into your body. Now the methods. What are the methods of treating macular degeneration? One is intravenous. Stem cells are injected intravenously in your body. They circulate in the body and using the theory that the stem cells go where they're needed, hopefully it's going to go to your macular degeneration. That's why it's important that you're in tip-top shape, you don't have a chronic sinus infection, uh, you don't have a leg ulcer. Those things have to be taken care of before you have your stem cell therapy. The second method is what, in what they're doing in Germany is a retrobulbar. A retrobulbar does not go into the eye. The needle is placed right underneath the eye and it's injected around the eye. The Germans feel that they're getting a much better bang for the buck, so to speak, by injecting it near the eye. That's retrobulbar. The third way is actually intraocular, where you take some stem cells and inject it right into the eye. So right now, the two simple methods that we have are the IV. Dr. Rowan's father, who had a good result, had the IV. I'm not sure of the results with the retrobulbar. The retrobulbar does not carry any more additional risk. Because in eye, as an eye surgeon, it's one of the most common procedures we do is a retrobulbar injection. It has very, very little risk. The other two procedures are more riskier when we inject inside the eye. It could cause inflammation, infection, etc. A couple good studies. One at Moorfield Hospital in England, and they're working with Pfizer Chemical Company. They're trying to develop a membrane, a stem cell membrane, to be implanted in the eye. And they have some preliminary animal studies that were favorable. Uh, Washington University Hospital uh, did a study where they injected stem cells in a uh, mouse eye that had a damaged retina. And they were able to d demonstrate regeneration of retinal cells, rods and cones, in the mouse eye. There's been two other studies that I'm, really got me interested in terms of looking at the effects of microcurrent after stem cell. Because the more I research stem cell, the more I realize it's getting these cells to grow and to go to the tissue. And that's why it's so critical, because Dr. Steenblock does the same things we do. Gluten-free diet. No corn, you know, proper hydration, reducing stress. He has a very strict diet. And he also feels that stress is key. If you're in that sympathetic state, you are not going to have good results with the stem cell. Uh, so in this, this Chinese study, Dr. Wang at uh, Jinan uh, University in China, he looked at the effect of microcurrent on osteoblasts. Now, in order for bone to grow, these cells have to come together to form a solid mass. If they're floating around in water, they're never going to grow bone. He noted that with microcurrent, the adhesiveness of the osteoblasts increased. It stimulated them collecting to forming bone. Uh, there was another study done in England looking at dermal fibroblasts. This is stem cell for skin. And they studied the effect of uh, microcurrent. What does it do to these dermoblasts? And they observed an increase in transforming growth factor. This is a chemical substance which reduces inflammation and helps with regeneration. So the microcurrent. So based on these two studies, I'm kind of excited that I think that microcurrent and stem cell therapy are going to go hand in hand. And what we're going to be looking at is a study uh, using stem cells and at the same time trying to measure the effect of uh, the microcurrent. Uh, so I think in, in terms of my mind, there's enough evidence out there to convince me that stem cell therapy may have a, an important effect in helping your body to regenerate. But let me emphasize again that it's not a shortcut. You know, you can't just go in for the stem cells and continue to smoke and eat garbage and live a stressful life. Because all of those conditions that I mentioned in the first part destroy the body's ability to regenerate.